Yo, what's up, Universal Consciousness? This is Blake Lockhart here, bringing you a brand new video today about thinking. Uh, the topic is thinking versus thought gathering. So this is a real personal topic. I've been uh, trying to work on my thinking, and I thought I'd bring out a fresh video today for uh, April 20th, 2020. 420. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce you to myself reading a book. God bless. The thinker and the thought gatherer. My next question is, what is thinking? Before I attempt an answer, let me show you the thinker at work as compared with the mere gatherer of thought. The first goes to nature and trusts rather his own eyes and ears than books. The second will climb to the top shelf of the library, fight his way through cobwebs, quivering with busy spinners, seize hold of a dust-begrimed book on zoology, all for no other purpose than to find out how many legs a spider has. That he might have caught one of these little creatures and examined for himself does not occur to him. If the thinker be appointed to lecture or to write an essay, he prepares the skeleton of it and takes stock of his mental material. Thus, he discovers at once wherein he will need to read further or observe more accurately. But the collector of thought, if given a task, asks immediately, where can I find something on it? And this will be true of him, even though it be a matter in which he is supposed to be better informed than anyone else. He distrusts his own powers of observation and thought, and well he may, as one who has leaned on others all his life, other eyes have looked for him, other ears heard, other imaginations conceived, other minds composed and written. His work has been chiefly to transfer bodily to his own mind the finished product of another as he finds it on the printed page. Books are the end of argument to him. It is written is his guide, and he applies it as well to books in general as to holy writ. The thinker also uses books, but only to get the material for thought. He so far distrusts the material thus found that he will read many authors, so as to be positive of the data from which he reasons. Books are generally a lengthened tissue of inferences. For every conclusion whose premises are given, ten are badly stated, without reasons. These ten he might accept as does his unthinking colleague, without question. Surely it would save time and mental effort, but his mind is too vigorous. Having developed a sharp set of mental teeth, he cannot bring himself to feed on hash, that is, on thoughts masticated and made ready for swallowing by other mouths. What brought the author to this conclusion, he asks. I will call up the fact again and try them over. Often he proves these conclusions wrong and learns thereby to distrust the generalizations of other men. And even when conclusions are found to be just, this retracing the history of a thought proves most excellent for mind discipline and yields him pleasure second only to the original finding of thought. So, too, his mind grows in another direction, for the habit of seeking out the springs of human thought leads naturally to the searching after reasons for divine thought, as expressed in nature and in revelation. And this is the very essence of true philosophy, thinking the thoughts of God after him. Another distinction is to be noted between the thinker and gatherer of thought and the habits they form. The thinker, pausing as he does to verify the important conclusions of his author, finds that he can read but a few books during a year. Hence, he is exceedingly jealous of the company he keeps in the library. Books trashy, frivolous, illogical, rehashed, his mind instantly detects and rejects as unwholesome. His colleague, not having this mental gauge, reads everything indiscriminately, having no other rule of selection than keeping up with the latest craze. He probably reads ten books to the other's one, but the ratio of real power gained thereby 
is as 10 to 1 in favor of the thinker. N. L. Nelson, professor of rhetoric and, elo and elocution in the Brigham Young Academy, Provo City, Utah. Well, wow, that's a good one.